Hello there, and welcome to another Talk Financials uh, video with uh, Ted taking us through the accounts today of Cineworld, um, UK-based cinema operator, um, founded mid-1990s and, and grew pretty spectacularly for, for a lengthy period. In fact, in 2017, when it bought out Regal Cinemas in the US, it became the second biggest cinema chain in the world. Um, however, the last few years have been uh, extremely challenging for this company uh, for obvious reasons related to the pandemic and, and some other issues to do with competition and streaming and the world of cinemas and, and movies in general. So a lot to pick apart here. Um, and as you'll see, as Ted takes us through the accounts, um, Cineworld have really reached a, a very difficult tipping point here in their operations, which we'll, we'll cover in a bit more detail shortly. So um, without uh, further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Ted to look at the accounts. Uh, do remember when he starts talking about the share price as well and, and the CEO's remuneration and so on. These are just our opinion, not formal investment advice at all. It's just our views on the company and, and how they're faring in these difficult times. So over to you, Ted. Thanks a lot, Johnny. Good to see you. And welcome to all of our viewers or welcome back, should I say, to our subscribers. Um, if you are not a subscriber, please do click on the subscribe button and don't forget to like and share and and also share your comments share your thoughts uh, on Cineworld what do you think of them are they good are they bad um uh, don't forget to uh, when you do share your comments uh, please always be polite and um, politeness uh, comes at no cost at all so let's have a look at Cineworld here we go here are their accounts 2021 okay now this is out of date 2021 um, and they will be producing we hope uh, their 2022 accounts um if they get that far and uh you'll see what i mean by that so let's um have a look so this is who they are what they do and who's in charge and 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 uh and kind of you know tells you all about their kind of movie and their business model etc 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 um and, and we're much more interested in their financial statements uh, and we have to scroll all the way through uh, to the income statement here it is so uh here we go um 2021 was better than 2020 as you might expect this is the year of covid uh, and so their revenue is 1.8 a billion we're in we're in millions of dollars so 1.8 billion obviously they've got all those cinemas all over the world um uh, and the cost of sales the cost of running those cinemas um is basically 1.3 billion uh, so that's about a 70 percent uh, uh uh cost um margin leaving them with a 30 percent gross profit margin 30 percent so every time you spend i don't know ten dollars on a ticket it costs them seven dollars to effectively rent that movie uh, from them from the uh from the uh, uh the movie house um uh, and they get to keep the other three dollars um and, and that revenue will also include things like popcorn and hot dogs and you know traditionally that's where cinemas make most of their money if you you know you've gone and sort of you know you, you go to the cinema and you you know buy i don't know five pounds for a ticket and then you spend another five pounds on a big bag of popcorn that popcorn costs basically nothing um so you know that's a massive revenue stream uh for um cinemas so these guys, they're making a, op a gross profit, a trading profit. However, their big issue is this number here, which is the cost of running the business. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that if your, uh, that if your trading profit is $542 million and the cost of running your business are $668 million, you are making a loss. Now, they're not making a loss. They're actually making a small profit, 15, um, uh, $16 million. And the reason for that is driven by this number here, which is the right back of or reversal of impairment. So just so we understand uh, what that is, um, these guys have done what's known as a kitchen sink. Um, and uh, to kitchen sink something is basically you just write down all the value of your assets. So last year, 2020, it's covid uh, nobody's going to the movies and they've just got they've got an old cinema they don't use it anymore and they go right let's just close it down we'll 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 show the cost of you know we're it's sitting as an asset we'll write it down as an asset it has no value now um, uh, and therefore we kind of you know we'll write it off and we'll just blame the whole thing on covid uh, and what they're then doing is saying oh hold on a sec actually one of those cinemas we think we're going to use and therefore we reopen it up um, uh, and we kind of write it back so this is a wonderful way of just moving profits uh, from one period 
to another this is you know mainly accounting shenanigans more than anything else but what they're just trying to do is to drive um, a, a nice little operating profit here um uh, on that number um so basically fundamental operating profit if you just if you ignore these numbers here you know they are uh, making a loss um uh, they they quote ebitda um i don't think it's necessarily relevant to them that's probably just again an opportunity to talk about a positive number either way if you're making whether you're making a small profit or a small loss or whatever it is if you are paying 900 million dollars um uh, on uh, interest payments on your debt you have a problem um uh, and that is kind of you know that is just a major problem for these guys you know it looks to me and we'll see this on the balance sheet that they are just carrying too much debt either way they're making a big loss it's not as big as it was last year um a uh, covid but you know they're meant to be kind of bouncing back out of covid um uh, and you know these guys you know that they're, they're, they're not bouncing far enough um so let's look at the balance sheet. Um, so what we see on the balance sheet, we see property and uh, 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 property planted equipment and right of use assets. So right of use is just, you know, property planted equipment on leasehold um, and also lots of goodwill. Now, this goodwill arises on acquisition. So this reflects the fact that these guys have grown through acquisition. So most of their non-current assets, that's the things they need to run the business, is made up of you know, goodwill, which which is kind of, you know, is, is an intangible asset. You can't, you know, you can't touch it. It's, it's an accounting adjustment for, for, for want of a better term. Five million, sorry, five billion dollars. Um, current assets, no inventory. That's, you know, a few bits of popcorn, some some hot dogs, uh, no trade receivables because, you know, we pay for our um, ticket and then go see the movie uh, and they got a little bit of cash. So total current assets, five hundred and thirty three million uh, uh dollars and current liabilities that they have to pay soon 1.6 billion that is our second issue so these guys they can't afford uh the debt that they've got and also they have a major liquidity problem where effectively uh, they don't have enough cash to be able to pay um their uh their pay their bills on time meet their financial obligations what have they got? Trade and other payables. Those are suppliers. They've got the lease payments they've got to make on their assets. If they can't make those, um, they're in a little bit of doo-doo. Um, this deferred revenue, this isn't really something they have to pay. This is just a, a, an accounting adjustment for timing. I, they've been paid uh, this year um, uh, for advertising revenue, and they're actually going to provide that advertising next year. Um, so that's a kind of a payment on account. Um and then in terms of their debt, let's just move that down a little bit so we can see the kind of, you know, the, the, the full liabilities, um, the debt. There it is, jumps out at us five billion plus a little bit of current debt um, that they have to repay uh, within a year. Um, massive amounts of debt. Uh, and this they're, they're just sinking under this debt. So they basically borrowed five billion to go and buy other companies. Uh, and now they can't make the interest payments. Um, uh, and that is bringing them down. And we're going to read about zombie companies, Johnny. Um, this is a good example of a zombie company. Too much debt. It can get away with it when interest rates are effectively zero. But as interest rates go up and they are going up, um, then these guys are going to find these, uh, uh, you know, that their interest payments are going up. And, and quite frankly, you know, no one's going to touch these guys with a barge pole. At least I wouldn't. OK, I'm not saying no one would. Um, uh, anyway, some total is that if you take all the assets, deduct the liabilities, you end up with net liabilities. Their assets are less than their liabilities. They are technically insolvent okay now technically you can be technically insolvent but you're not allowed to trade if you are actually insolvent and i'm wondering whether these guys are actually insolvent and whether they should actually be just saying you know what i'm really sorry that's it game over we call in the the, the receivers um and we either go into receivership and sell or we go into liquidation and just close it down and, and try and get as much money back for these guys who are owed the money um uh, as we possibly can don't forget this this lease assets this will all be secured on those right of use assets okay so they're just going to take their assets back again um but these guys here the people who've lent uh, lent the money to the business well you know what um uh, i wouldn't be i wouldn't be holding my breath to get all of my money back let's put it like that first loss is best loss as they say um needless to say johnny um 
quite surprising that they actually decided to pay a dividend in 2020. I mean, I have absolutely no idea why a company that makes a loss of 2.6 billion um, with liquidity ratios shot to pieces um, uh, has decided that it's prudent and a good idea to pay a, a dividend. Um, uh, and, and that is certainly uh, something which is questionable. And if I was a if I was a creditor, I would be asking some fairly serious questions of the lawyers. Anyway, needless to say, no dividend paid um, in uh, in 2021 um, because they just can't afford it. Um, and in terms of cash flow, um, interestingly enough, um, they are actually uh, uh, generating cash flow. So they do have positive cash flows. And that positive cash flow is sort of really driven by um, this depreciation. Um, so what they're doing is that they're saying, look, you know, let, let, let's ignore the, um, uh, the the finance for now. We'll come back to the finance in a minute. Um, and then they add back depreciation, which is an accounting adjustment. OK, however, a um, couple of things to notice. So first of all, um, if you are buying property plant and equipment, their property plant and equipment is significantly lower than the depreciation. So that means that they've got tired cinemas that are just getting more and more tired. They're not investing it. And therefore, people are just going to go, well, why would I want to go and you know, to a sort of manky old um, cinema to see a movie when I can potentially go to a kind of a newer one? Um, acquisitions of subsidiaries i mean you know that's pretty punchy for a company that's in you know basically on its knees um the fact that it's actually buying um still buying companies i, I think is 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 foolhardy i think would be my my um uh, uh, expression for it you may say um you know very very brave um but don't forget they're probably working with other people's money um and then down the bottom we've got the financing interest paid now here's the next interesting one interest paid 227 million well johnny if you have an interest bill um of 900 million and you only pay 227 that means that the rest of it um has been added to your loan so these guys you know they're going back to the banks they're saying we can't afford the interest can we just add that interest to the loan um uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and this is you know so this is a one way um, a one way street and it, it doesn't really have a very nice um, ending. Um, they're drawing down their loans. They are borrowing more money. Um, you know, they're sort of financing themselves through debt. Um, they're paying their leases because they have to. Um, you know, it, it's it's a it, it's a right old mess, these guys. So, um, you know, this has got alarm bells written all over it. Um, in terms of the um, the uh, uh, the the. Um, uh, share price, Johnny, um, we'll have a look at it. Here it is. Here comes the share price. So, um, you know, as we'd expect, um, you know, they have basically tanked. Um, uh, this is, you know, we're just looking at a one year. There's no price to earnings ratio because there are no earnings. There's no dividend yield because there is no dividend. Um, their market cap is 48 million. That's all goodwill because, of course, um, they've got a negative balance sheet. As we said, their assets are less than their liabilities. Um, how you come up with that 48 million, I have absolutely no idea. Um, but don't forget, you might look at this and say, oh, look, it's only 348. Um, it's cheap as chips. I'll have a bit of that. And there's quite a few people on chat rooms who say, yeah, no, I'll have a bit of that. It can't get much lower. Well, you know, it doesn't matter where it goes to. You can still lose your entire investment. Um, you may be thinking, oh, actually, this would be a good one to go short. I think I'm going to go short because it's going to go even lower. Um, uh, but of course, you know, these guys can be quite slippery like that. And maybe um, uh, I think they've got their um, their US uh, into um, chapter 11, for example. Um, uh, and maybe they can kind of, you know, they can trade their way out. And, and you know, but I'm... I'm struggling to see where the value comes from. I really am. It's that five billion dollars of debt that is just, you know, with interest rates rising, uh, you know, it, it's that, that that's that's the big issue for them. So let's have a look at who's in charge um, and who's kind of, you know, uh, ultimately, I guess, responsible for all of this. So, um, you know, if we want to see uh, the CEO, um, uh, we can find the CEO on page 67 of this document. So just scroll up. Um, here is page 67 um, and we can see the CEO. Uh, here we go. Um, so uh, we've got um, Moshi and Israel um, are the are the kind of the executive directors. Um, and Moshi took one point five million pounds uh, out of the business and increase uh, from 830 that's nearly doubling on um, their salary so 1.5 uh, 
million pounds um, out of this business. Um, are they worth it? Um, well, I'll leave you uh, to decide that based on the numbers that we've been looking at. Um, I'm sure it's very difficult, difficult to, run to run a business, business which is an international and, and going into the ground. But quite frankly, um, uh, I'd, I'd rather see that money spent um, a slightly better elsewhere. Right. Um, let's see what the employees are getting paid. So if we actually look at um, uh, uh, our, our CEO compared with the average employee, right. um, employee information is available on page 124 of this document. If I can just get myself to 124, here it comes. Um, so here is page 124, um, uh, and we see the uh, the staff numbers and costs. So total headcount, uh, and this is what's known as full time equivalent, because you know these guys, you know, they'll employ lots of part time. You know, kids will kind of, you know, they'll kind of work shifts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a kind of total headcount um, uh, uh, gives them uh, about 28, 28 million. Sorry, 28,000, 28,000 staff. Um, and if you pay 28,000 staff and you pay them uh, a total of um, $328 million, um, and interesting enough, we're kind of bouncing, you know, the, the, the CEO was paid in, um, was paid in pounds, you'll remember, um, uh, and the staff are, you know, are reported in dollars. Um, but if you pay them 328, then the average remuneration per an employee is about, about just under $12,000. Um, Johnny, so just under twelve thousand dollars, and just under twelve thousand dollars is, in my book, about ten thousand um, uh, pounds. And so you can see that the uh, CEO is being paid uh, uh, basically one hundred and forty, one hundred and forty-seven times um, the average employee. Uh, and I'm sure uh, the CEO is worth every penny, um, but I'm not a hundred percent convinced uh, based on the performance of this business. So there we go, Johnny. That is my analysis of Cineworld. Um, am I a buyer? No. Um, am I a shorter? Um, possibly, although I think I might have missed the boat a little bit on that short. So I'm sure there are people who are sitting out there. Um, but don't forget, it can still go down. It can still go to zero. So, um, you know, if you are going to short it, set your stop losses, um, uh, make sure that, you know, you're, you're, you're happy with your homework. You've done your kind of, you know, up to date. Obviously, I'm looking at some fairly out of date um, figures here. Um, uh, but this would be certainly one um, uh, to, uh, you know, if we looked at it earlier, if we if we looked at those numbers um, when they come out, um, that would have definitely been a very good um, uh, uh, short stock um, for us. Well, thanks for that, Taylor. That's uh, pretty pretty depressing stuff listening to that, to be honest. It's a um, company that's clearly in a very sorry state um, for perhaps a combination of, of bad luck, bad timing, um, unfortunate circumstances uh, surrounding it in, in, uh, in the sort of environment it's trying to operate in for a number of reasons, but um you know it makes pretty depressing listening i've got to say um but it's hard to disagree with anything you said and, and of course the elephant in the room and you did mention it briefly in your comments is that since the uh, accounts you were talking about at the end of 2021 um Cine cinewell has filed for chapter 11 protection uh in the us in its us operations in i think it was september last year um and there was stories in the ft just a few weeks ago saying that they're sort of sounding out prospective buyers for their the whole of their their asset base for the whole of the company rather than you know being taken apart piece by piece so perhaps a company that sort of has fared well over the relatively recent past but just run into serious trouble is sort of heading towards its final chapter it certainly seems to be on borrowed time from what you said although um again just to reiterate uh, to your point as well that you know unexpected things can happen and it's not a sort of guarantee that this is going to end badly so you know, people need to be careful, but, you know, not much optimism to be taken from any of that, unless you're on the board, I suppose, they seem to have done okay, but there we are. So thank you, Ted, that was uh, pretty interesting and, and pretty depressing for uh, anyone who arguably works there or is a shareholder who bought the shares at a higher valuation is hoping for the best. Um, yeah, so there we are. Um, any final comments from you, Ted, on that one? I don't think so, um, Johnny, only that, um, you know, if they are going to be selling off, you know, peaceful, if they're going to sell off the, the individual assets, um, you know, again, don't forget that the, you know, the, the debt providers get paid first. So they've got to clear 
five billion before the shareholders get a single penny. So again, I'm struggling to work out where that 48 million um, of market value comes from. Personally, um, I think this has, you know, I think this has no value at all. I think they may be, you know, effectively what they're doing is putting the company into liquidation and they're selling off the individual assets. But I can't see with, you know, five billion of goodwill sitting on the balance sheet. And don't forget, goodwill is you're just buying future income. OK, so that future income is already reflected in the balance sheet and they borrowed the money in order to buy that future income. So, you know, I can't see where the where, you know, where the value is going to come from uh, in the shareholders. But hey, what do I know? So I would say, you know, any of our viewers, if you've got an opinion, um, uh, if, it, if you agree with us, if you disagree with us, I'd love to hear it. If you've got some insight, if you work in the business, you've been analyzing, maybe you're short, maybe you've gone long on these guys, um, you know, please, please do share your, your thoughts. Um, obviously, uh, please do be polite. Um, politeness obviously doesn't come uh, at a cost. Uh, we try to be polite on this channel. Um, you know, we're all kind of learning from each other. I'm not an expert in Cine World at all. Um, uh, and I'd love to hear what um, other people have got to say. So um, thanks a lot, Johnny. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks, Ted. Cheers, mate. Hello, thank you for watching that video. And I hope you found its contents useful. If you want to know more about what we do here at Talk Financials, you can find out on talkfinancials.com uh, where we uh, will explain how we design, develop and deliver training workshops for companies all over the world. Uh, we've worked with over 300 companies in over 35 countries around the world, uh, helping them to understand financial statements, to understand uh, business finance and to become fluent in the language of business finance. Uh, if you're interested in, in developing your own skills in how you read and interpret financial statements, um, uh, I've developed an online workshop, uh, which is available. All you've got to do is click on the QR code there, uh, point your camera at the QR code, um, and that will take you through to an online workshop. Uh, and it will help you to improve your own ability to read and interpret financial statements. Uh, I've also written a book called How to Talk Finance. Uh, and again, that is available. Um, if you click on the QR code, it'll take you through to the Amazon website where you can buy the book either as a hard copy or as a Kindle edition. Um, and that's really everything from me. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, it'd be great to stay in touch. If you'd like to contact me, um, then again, just click on the QR code um, uh, and send me a message. Uh, and good luck with uh, your financial analysis. I hope it goes well.